Thank you for joining me today. It's Wednesday. Can you believe it? You have gotten through part of your first week of school with your new um, schedule for school. I hope those of you who have, who have already gone to school this week um, have had a good day. And those of you who still have a day coming, that it will go well. I hope that you are adjusting to your masks at school and... Those of you who are doing online school, I hope it's going well. I hope that you have um, been able to get everything accomplished and understand all those things. I know it's a, it's a new, difficult way to do school, isn't it? Well, today is our last missionary story. We started this in May, I believe it was. We started doing our missionary stories on Wednesdays. And I hope that you have enjoyed them. Missionary stories have always been something I enjoyed. So let's jump into our last one and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So the name of this story is Through the Water. It was 35 degrees below zero. Icy cold gripped the forests and lakes of northern Ontario, Canada in an iron fist. It was a good day for staying comfortable inside beside your fireplace or a heated stove. But the two men on the Mission Snowmobile had a job to do. They needed a cold day to do it. There goes a moose, Morley Mikus, the Indian driver of the snowmobile, shouted above the engine's roar. His alert dark eyes had seen the huge shadowy figure before it melted back into the forest. Well, there's the tractor, the second man replied with a grin. Alvin Frey, the missionary, knew he would probably never be so wise in the ways of the North Woods as the Cree Indians to whom he preached. But he did have many new things to show them. When Alvin had arrived at Deer Lake Mission a few years before, he found the Cree Indians there living in poverty. All of their food supplies, except for meat and fish that they hunted, had to be purchased at high prices from the trading post. Deer Lake was over a hundred miles from any road. So supplies were expensive. Most Indian families made less than a thousand dollars a year. So when they hunt, when they were hunting the pool, the, sorry, let's fix that. So many of them would fall into despair and spend money on things they didn't need and their families would go hungry. How could Alvin show these people that Jesus cared about them? How could he help them help themselves? Both questions had found one answer in the tractor, which now stood under a crude shed on the edge of the woods. Christians in the East who were concerned about the mission to the Indians had raised money to buy a tractor. This was the first tractor these Indians had ever seen. And it made a big difference in their lives. Several acres of woodlands had to be cleared, had been cleared with the tractor, and Alvin had shown them how to plant potatoes for themselves. Soon the garden was producing tons of potatoes and turnips for the village. The garden patch was on an island across the lake from the village. During the summer, the tractor had to stay on the island, but now that the lake had frozen over, Alvin was going to drive it back across the ice. All of the people of the village were eagerly awaiting their turn to use the tractor for hauling firewood. Better measure the ice again on this side, Morley advised. Taking his axe, he began to chopping a hole through the frozen surface. Meanwhile, Alan fueled up the tractor and prepared to start the engine. When the two men were satisfied that all was ready, Alvin started the tractor. The engine roared into life and the clouds of exhaust smoke hanging in the frosty air. Are you coming? He cried over to Morley as the tractor chugged slowly out onto the ice. As soon as I can get my ski do going, the Indian shouted, bending over his snowmobile. For some reason, the machine was slow to start. Sinking back into the seat to rest for a moment, he watched as Alan and the tractor proceeded across the lake. Suddenly, a horrible crack 
sounded in the distance, but Morley gasped and stood staring at the end of the tractor as it began to sink. Somewhere beneath the ice, the current of water had worn thin the frozen surface. Alvin and the tractor had hit the spot. Help! Oh, dear God, please help him, Morley cried out. Both the tractor and the missionary sank into the hole and were gone. Pinned beneath the steering wheel, Alvin could not escape. His thick clothes almost made him cry out in pain. Down, down, down into the depths, they sank. The, tractor the tractor's tires touched the muddy bottom of the lake, and Alvin was able to get himself free. Hurry, swim back, he told himself, but his boots and his clothes weighed him down. His body was starving for oxygen. Don't breathe in the water. You'll drown. Fuzzy thoughts came to his mind. What will my family do? What about the Indians here? Oh, why did I lose the tractor? With a gentle bump, his head hit a sheet of ice. And hope quickly flared, only to be replaced by despair. I've come up under the ice. I'll never get through. Suddenly, the broken ice floated away. And Alvin's head shot out of the water. He gulped in lungs full of oxygen. His eyes hit the sunlit trees and sparkling snow. Heaven was so close, he thought. I was almost there. Another moment and I would have seen my Lord Jesus. Morley arrived close by with his snowmobile in time to pull him out of the water. Oh, Brother Alvin, you're alive. You were under the water for ten minutes. I thought there was no hope. He hurried Alvin on to the snowmobile and drove back to the village to the trading post unable to move his arms he warmed up by the stove talk alvin the indian said please tell us the missionary said calm down i'm all right but let morley tell the story as he told the story an old indian listened i know this white man tells the truth or he would not have come out of the water alive weeks later the police brought in a diver and hooked, it, hooked the, tra the tractor to a plane and pulled it out, and it was back to working again. As the months passed, Alvin began to understand one reason at least why God had allowed the tractor to fall through the ice. When Christians throughout the country learned of what had happened, they made new efforts to support missionary work in church after church as the story was told of his narrow escape. Many people pledged to send money to the mission to help the Indians. So Alvin Frey, the man this is about, worked for 20 years with the Northern Light Gospel Mission. He fell through the ice in 1963. He had five children, and he has remained in the Lord's work in Canada. So when this book that we're reading was written, which was... A long time ago, 2000, 1993 was when the book was written. He was still a pastor in a church in Manitoba, Canada. So that must have been super scary, don't you think? You're just driving this, well, driving a tractor across ice, I think, would be scary anyway, right? But then thinking you can't get out once you've fallen in that cold water and you're trapped underneath there. But God saved him, didn't he? He did. He brought him back up through it. And ultimately, God used that very scary situation to help people to want to send money to help him to minister to these Indians that were there. I think it's a pretty cool story. Now, here's the book again that we have been reading since May. It's called Missionary Stories with the Millers. Now, we did not read every story in this book, believe it or not. There are several stories in here that we did not read because some of the stories are a little bit too exciting, I guess you could use the word. There are some missionaries in the world who have given their life in um, service to God um, through age or through other means that have happened to them. So we didn't read those stories because some of them might be a little too intense for us to share, um, especially if we have friends who are younger. But if anyone would want to have their own copy, this is on Amazon. That's where Miss Eden got it. Um, 
I highly recommend it. Jenny has read the entire book cover to cover um, because she really likes missionary stories. I hope you have enjoyed our missionary time together. Um, now, next week, we will be in a different place. We will not be in the Playhouse anymore. And no more Ellie um, jumping up to join us next Wednesday. Um, we will be in another spot. And we will start um, Wednesday night curriculum like we would kind of normally do on Wednesday nights. Um, with our class at church. So it'll be a little bit different, obviously. Um, but I am looking forward to getting into um, our new lessons that we're going to do together. And I hope you'll enjoy them. Moms and dads and other uh, grown-up people who have enjoyed our missionary stores, please feel free to continue watching us on Wednesday nights. Um, sometimes it's a little more focused at kids, but... Everybody can learn a little bit something new from the Bible, regardless of what your age is, and through a teacher who is just doing the best she can. So, um, thank you so much for joining me, um, and I will see you on Sunday.